Jim Dubois, uh, ex CIO at Microsoft, spent over 25 years over there, a veteran over there, uh, has led security teams, uh, I've been a CIO over there. Uh, so uh, before we get started on to the topic of Chad GPT, uh, Jim, do you just want to introduce yourself in terms of your experience at Microsoft and uh, what your role was there and recently with uh, you being board member at many other companies? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, the, I got to be at Microsoft for a long time, which was great. I got to see a lot of the, the different leaders go through and, and uh, see how each approached everything. And, and I was the chief information security officer for, for several years earlier in my career. Uh, the last four years, uh, which overlapped with Satya's first four years as CEO, I was the CIO, which was a really fun time to be there as he was transforming Microsoft. Awesome. No, the, the current Microsoft is pretty awesome. It's like uh, well-respected amongst the developer community also. And uh, it, like the old days of Microsoft are back. It seems like it's, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm excited about, their investments in generative AI. I'm also excited about uh, what Jassy is doing at Amazon and at AWS. I'm, I'm pretty uh, impressed by the Anthropic $4 billion investment. Um, this, this generative AI is going to meaningfully uh, make the world better for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of companies making a lot of progress and, and everything's continuing to accelerate and go faster and faster. So leveraging the AI is a great way to keep up with that. Yeah, cool. All right, uh, let's, uh, let me just introduce Strack uh, for everyone who's watching this webinar. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Strack. Strack is a SaaS and a cloud data loss prevention solution where we automatically scan for sensitive messages, attachments, chat messages, conversations, anywhere, any kind of sensitive document. Uh, we'll detect it, redact it, uh, put them into a vault essentially with our unique experience. Uh, we have a lot of SaaS and cloud app integrations. Uh, check us out. But before uh, not talking much about Strack, let's dive deep into ChatGPT. Uh, uh, it has changed the world uh, last November 2022 when it was launched. Uh, the fastest growing, essentially, a SaaS tool uh, the world has ever seen. Um, so, Jim, let's kick off with like, all the ways in which like the world is using any any personal uh one of your favorites using your use cases if you want to share uh yeah just uh let's kick it off that way yeah let me just take a couple of minutes on this slide which i believe you asked chat gpt for the top five which is great to have that put in i, I think a lot of people are are leveraging from just content create, creation and editing you know a lot of people i've talked to are just almost helping themselves be more productive that way because you can curate what comes back from chat GPT and your voice and, and leverage all of that. Um, on an education perspective, I use my son as an example. He's uh, in the engineering program at UW right now and uses chat GPT to help him with his homework and assignments all the time in a way that helps him learn, of course. But uh, I, I think that the, it's complete has an opportunity to completely change the the education industry. Um, a lot of the portfolio companies I'm working with are leveraging uh, ChatGPT and, and large language models for uh, programming development. Um, in particular, there I'd say test automation is a place to start on on a, a way to leverage it. Um, customer support's another great one. This has been around for a long time, but it's gotten a lot better, a lot faster because of leveraging the the large language models um, like ChatGPT, um, and and of course entertainment, social interaction. There's there's just so much happening in the space, and 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 uh, we're under you know, both, both having the the issues with the writer strike, as you're, you're seeing. They're they're worried about uh, yeah, yeah. AI. Yeah. Uh, having an impact, but but it's also helping uh, the productivity there in a in a huge way. Yeah, I mean, in my experience as an engineer, also, uh, I think it has improved almost every engineer's life by ten x. Just by like some of the concepts which were not known, you know it pretty easily. 
more importantly, like the code it generates is like accurate or if not accurate, almost accurate that uh, you need to be an engineer first, obviously, to just make sure that this is the content is generating the right because you become a good tester for ChatGPT. Just like this content was generated by ChatGPT, I just have to make sure this is good enough for the audience over here. Uh, yeah. I think you need that level of uh, human, um, uh, what do you say, governance over here. Uh, yeah. And this is doing the right thing. But it has really made everyone's life more productive. Like, I think the world is so much better. Like, uh, yes, last time I was learning on some concept and like it took me like five links on Google search and then I forgot, oh, let me ask ChatGPT. It gave me literally like so many examples, explain me well and, and like I'm a much better person in that particular domain now than I was before. So I think that is like a huge win for everyone. Yep. And it's the the concept Microsoft uses this term co-pilot, but, but it's helping people be better as opposed to replacing people. And if we that just is, keep that as the, the Uber theme in this, then, yeah. then we get away from some of the negatives about the... Yeah, the, I think I think a lot of people are talking about this replacing, like humans will be replaced. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen. It's going to be just make it, making us more productive. Like there's so many elements of human like like the dimension, the interaction, the brain, and the aura of the human interaction, like this world, the way we, which we live in, it's just impossible to imagine uh, a robot just mimicking like love, emotion, like everything, like all the, what makes human human is going to be like easily programmable, right? I mean, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, since ChatGPT is awesome, anything that is awesome always has its own shortcomings uh, for good reasons. I think the shortcomings are good because uh, it makes that the person much, much better. Like same thing with like, you have superpowers, then you have growth areas, right? No human is perfect. Had a human be perfect, they would be doing everything right, right? So uh, yeah, I mean, you wanna kick off with like, what are the risks that you see in addition to what is listed or just in general? Yeah, again, what's listed is what ChatGPT told us were the, the top three risks. But it, if we keep that same pivot of this is helping humans rather than replacing, I think the, the risks are all about trying to replace as opposed to, you know, the this first risk, like relying on inaccurate things. If you've got common sense as part of what you're doing, you're gonna you're gonna recognize that and that's not gonna be an issue. But if you don't use that, if you just try to replace the human instead of making the human better, then you're at risk of you know being uh, subject to any of these uh the risks that that it called out here. No, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. Uh and an accidental like sharing of sensitive data or just like uh, inaccuracy that with chat GPT hallucinates and gives out the wrong information. Those are real risks. I mean, it can, you can, it's not, chat GPT must not be used in anything um, life saving <laughs> uh, scenarios as of today. I think at least chat GPT, maybe. A properly trained LLM model is a whole different thing than using ChatGPT as is, uh, but it's not for critical mission thing. But th that's where I think inaccuracy in, uh, or audit information can be fact checked. Essentially, there are tools being built to just check that out, or you can just do your own research on Google or something where uh, you can find out and uh, corroborate if the information is valid or not. Um, but yeah, I, I, I also I don't, I'll, let me just just say on that that. I mean, the, the way these models work, it's actually predicting the answer to whatever questions you have. And and what what maybe is is missing this this concept of hallucination, the the percent chance that the that the answer is the right one to that is something that isn't exposed. And you can ask questions that that are going to have a really low chance of getting a right answer, and that's where we start getting some of the hallucinations. It you know if you if you ask questions that are you know really about you know help me find this better or help me state this differently or you know you you can use it to become much more productive. But if you if you want to mislead it, you can, and you can find ways that'll give you inaccurate information 
Um, it's just how how you use this. So you just have to be careful of that. Yeah, a hundred percent. And then the last part on this critical thinking, I love this point of, I mean, one most people will argue, yes, there's a loss of critical thinking happening because, hey, you're not thinking, somebody else is thinking for you. I think I have a contrarian view on this that I think I'm not thinking what does not even matter. Like everything that is already solved problem, but you don't, you don't work on already solved problems. Like you learn about them. you be curious about them. Like, okay, laws of physics. Like I want to learn the first law of thermodynamics. Yeah. I am curious about it. It's already solved problem, but that is not making the world move forward. I think the word is making world move forward is using tools like ChatGPT do what is already solved and now vet out if that is good and to vet out whether the information is correct vet out like what questions to ask because what questions to ask what prompts to ask is the most is the actually really hard and getting it to what your goal or the mission is essentially that's far more important and actually that involves critical thinking so in fact my poor point is that the Critical thinking part, which is the already solved problem, solve a chat GPT. It's not loss of critical thinking, it's a gain of critical thinking because you are now, your mind share is going in different ways where the world is not seen yet. Absolutely. the let Give us the capacity to focus on the thinking that needs to happen, not the stuff that already has been solved that we can leverage. Exactly. That, that's that's the opportunity here. Exactly. If, we, if you try to focus on the stuff that's already been solved, you're wasting wasting your time so makes sense uh so yeah we mentioned like data privacy was interesting and strap yeah, we need, in we need to business. drill in on this one of course <laughs> so the entire thing about chat is so exciting about like you can ask anything hence you can share anything and and the world has seen all kinds of use cases like csv files being shared like give me a summary of that thing or here is my chart of plot graphs. Give me some, like, give me some more insights. Like, uh, it's it's so much easy now. So one of the things that has made huge headlines, especially in like tech companies, in banking, in financial services, healthcare, like medical data, PHI data, or just in general in government world, uh, like, what should we do? How should we? solve this uh, privacy problem where I have the data being shared by my employees. Like what is your like high level overview of how should companies think of that? So so this is, it, it's definitely a, a two part thing. The first is the, the, the first bullet here, which is just an education to help everybody understand that whatever data you put in your questions is now at being added to the overall corpus of data. So when you share code asking for you know how to make this better, that code is now available publicly. If you like like you said, you know sharing you know confidential documents that you're looking for a summarization, that con confidential document is no longer confidential. Okay. So helping helping all the employees, and and anybody that's handling sensitive data understand that is is the first step. But then you got to you know help them make sure that they're doing that using automation. And that's the the second two points. And you know maybe this is a place where you can talk a, a little bit about what Strack does to to help here. Yeah. No. A hundred percent. So what Strack does is Strack has its own endpoint DLP and a browser DLP. Uh, so let's take browser DLP. You're sharing some sensitive data on or something. You're not saying you don't know you're sharing sensitive data. Maybe it's accidental. Most mistakes are accidental. They're not malicious. Nobody's trying to maliciously feed chat GPT. It is none that I know of. But accidents happen, like for example, a CSV file, a spreadsheet, anything being shared or code. Like here is my code taken from my GitHub. I'm just trying to make it better or just giving more context. Now you don't want, at least your company doesn't want to share the sensor data. Uh, how we uh, make the end user's life more uh, productive and also the solving the IT or security problem is uh, we have this browser uh, DLP or an endpoint DLP, which will scan for your sensitive, scan for all messages. 
If it is sensitive, sensitive defined by the policy that you have already attached and doing onboarding to Stripe, uh, we will either block it or redact it. Um, by blocking, you'll get an alert saying that, hey, you shared some sensitive information and hence you will not be able to uh, send it to ChatGPT or redaction is actually better where we'll redact out the sensitive parts with something pseudonyms of fake data because ChatGPT really doesn't need to care about doesn't care about what data you're sending as long as you're able to send A and it understands what A is really uh, and get back A and then you replace A with your original data, which we do with redaction, both outgoing and then incoming you replace with the original data. You can actually uh, get what your job is supposed to be done. So that's one side of things on more on the chat GPT thing. What we have seen is on the on the other side of thing, which is the large language models, again, the same open AI, or it could be Anthropic, or it could be a AWS Bedrock. Uh, now you have all these LLM models uh, that is powering uh, this AI use cases. Now, again, same thing. What if you send the sensor data over there? And that's where our proxy solution comes into picture, uh, where we will automatically redact out the sensor data on the outgoing. I'll just take a detour on that one since it's an interesting uh, design pattern that we innovated on. So for example, you are the client app developer writing some code, sending out some sensitive data. What we'll do is we will on the way out, stack access a proxy when you send out to open AI, AWS Bedrock, anyone, we will redact all the sensor data and again, go back uh, and pass the data which is masked out to third party partner. That way third party partner doesn't see the original data, always sees redacted data, and it could be fake pseudonyms, it could be redacted, payload, everything is infinite of that sort. So yeah, uh, I want to again go back to our slideshow and just like let's uh yeah, anything else that you that do you think, Jim, uh you want to add on to this topic? I, I think that's great. I'll hit it in the in the summary on the next slide. Oh, awesome. Which, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, ra rather than take a bunch of questions, you asked me to just give three pieces of advice. And, and let me, let me start with reemphasizing this, this, uh, helper mode of, of large language models. Every company should be thinking about how they can leverage this. And, and there's a whole bunch of things, whether it's some, some copilot with Microsoft or just um, open source code that's out there. There's a ton of things that can help with developer productivity, customer support productivity. I would start with developer, particularly with test automation. Like I said before, you're less likely to share sensitive code. It's an area that almost everybody needs to improve their, their coverage in test automation. It's a great way to help improve um, developer productivity to help get that tech debt solved so that, that you're being more productive. You know, a ton of companies that I'm working with are using this live now and it's showing real progress. Um, certainly in, in as ways to accelerate customer supports, another one of those. But for, first thing is everybody should find a way to help themselves using this by, um, you know, as a supplement to people as opposed to a uh, re, you know, replace people. Um, the second thing is just to be aware of the the risk of of oversharing. And I I've talked to a ton of developers from different companies, e even companies that are forbidding anybody from using ChatGPT or anything because they you know don't want things shared and they're trying to figure out how to do it. But the good developers are still taking their code. They're redacting it because they know they shouldn't do things and they're putting it out and getting getting suggestions and they're becoming more productive on their own without the, the companies knowing. So people are doing this all over the place already. So it's really important to think through how you're going to um, supplement the education with some some form of DLP to to just to help protect what you have and something that can redact like Strack does is a is a great way to to do that. And I and and every company should be thinking through how they can leverage something to just to to reduce the risk while they're they're getting the benefits. And and the 
the the last thing is just the the recognition that you know this this isn't replacing people that this is um and we we can help em- employees understand this isn't something to be afraid of this is something to help you know my my son was getting a, a hard time from his mom about using chat gpt for his homework and he he said it's just it's just like when i was doing math problems i was using exactly. a calculator it's yeah. it's solving the stuff that is already and i'm i'm able to apply my thinking to you know how to do the complex problem not the easy two plus exactly. two things. exactly exactly no well, everybody should just help that message because it'll help us do the right positive things with leveraging of these new technologies makes sense uh love love all three pieces of advice jim uh this is great no yeah uh thank you so much for your time jim uh hope uh, this was useful to you i'm pretty sure it was, it was useful to all the viewers who are going to watch this webinar so uh, thank you so much once again great thanks right. bye